Shabbat Shalom, we're here. We had some uh, technical difficulties, to say the least. Trying to understand how we're going to do this. We don't know who's going to show up. And it uh, looks like, so far, Dan and I are going to deal with the service. And uh, I guess probably uh, Elfgrins will come, as far as we know. But it's, it's great to have you here. As you know, there's a reason why there's less people uh, this week, I think also last week was the same thing, uh, but this week there's the, the conference, the Takoon Conference, which Mia and I just got back from the leadership conference. Uh, there was, I don't think there's anyone else here who was there, but we just got back from the leadership conference last night, um, and it was awesome, and it was so awesome that I had to, I had to include it in the message that uh, will be preached later today, and I just pray that's all the Lord. I think the worship team is ready. What do you have, a couple right. of songs to start? Okay, I think the worship team's all ready, so there's really not much to say, except I just want to pray that, that uh, and we, we had a little prayer with the four of us before, but we just pray that, that, that you, Holy Spirit, take over. You, Ruach HaKodesh, you come in here, you take over. We don't want it to be us. We, we just want to leave our egos at the door. That's something we learned this weekend. Leave our egos at the door and just get to a place where it's like, a, how, how do you even see us as worthy to be doing this? But you do because you're God and you choose to use us, little peons, which you have anointed to do your work in this world, Lord. We thank you that you see us worthy to do it because we don't see us, uh, ourselves as worthy to do that. But Lord, bless this time. We want you to take over. We don't want any of us, but all of you, Ruach. And we pray this all in the precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Messiah. Amen. Let's stand together as we worship together in unity.
Josiah. But we're going to have to do the tallies. We got the tallies on already. <laughs> we have the Elfkins. Thank you. We got somebody who could do Hebrew well, unlike this Jewish schmo. <laughs> Start with the blessing of the Messiah. So you could join me with this. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation through the Messiah, Yeshua. Whoop. Join me. Baruch Atadonoi, Eloheinu Melakolom, Asher Natulonu et Direct Yeshua. Bemashiach, Yeshua, Amen. Now we do the Shema. Now we start the Shema, which is what I always do. And just to those who came in since, Shabbat Shalom to all of you. And we have, we have, we finally, we have Ned here, who also was with us at the at the leadership conference, and uh, it was just an awesome time. Uh, we'll probably have another time to share how awesome the, the conference was so far, and then the people who are there now will be able to share how awesome uh, the rest of the conference was. I will tell you guys, if you get a chance, go next year, if you get a chance. It's wonderful. The resort is wonderful. The teaching's wonderful. You're hearing guys from all over the world, especially Israel. When I hear someone from Israel who's been doing ministry in Israel speak, it's just so anointed. These guys are so anointed. And it just really touched my heart. And I hope that you guys, at least if you don't come, are able to listen, I guess, to some of the teachings online. All right. Join me with this. One is our God. Great is our master, holy is his name. Now unto the king, eternal, immortal, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. We bend our knee and bow and acknowledge our thanks before the king of kings. Blessed be he. The seat of his glory is in the heavens and the presence of his power is in the loftiest heights. He is our God and there is no other. Amen. Now join me with the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Boruch Shem Kavot Malkuto Le'olam va'ed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kinship for all eternity. Amen.
Vehafta et Hadanai al Hecha, Bechol of Avcha, of Kol Nashacha, of Kol Medecha, Vahayu Harvarim Hale, Asher Anachim Mitzafcha, Hayom Alva Vecha, Veshinantam Levanecha, Vedibarta Bam Beshiftacha, Bevitacha, of Lechtacha Vaderek, of Shachbecha, of Kumecha, Ukshatam Lot Ayedecha, Vahayu, the Totafot Bain and Echa, of Satam Al Mazot Betecha, Uvisharecha. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children and speak of them while you sit in your home, when you walk by the way, when you retire and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Playing it by ear, who's doing what? As long as as long as he gets the Hebrew, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> Join us as we do the second of the Shema. Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and we exist for Him, and one Lord Yeshua the Messiah, by whom are all things, and we exist through Him. Everyone 
Everyone standing. Vahi ben Soharon, Vayomer Moshe, Guma Adonai, Vea Futsu Hoevecha, Vea Nusu Misanecha, Mipanecha, Ki Metzion Tetze Tohora, Ki Metzion Tetze Tohora. Udvar Adonai Mirushalayim Baruch Shemotan Torah Torah Baruch Shemotan Torah Torah Le'amo Yisrael Bihitu Shato when the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from you. For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Israel. Let me say the Shema for the second time. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adonainu Kadoshimro Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord, the one and only one for us. One is our God, great is our master, holy is his name. The Lord is king, the Lord was king. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Yeshua is king. Yeshua was king. Yeshua shall reign forever and ever. We do the tour procession. Okay. Explain it, big guy. Already. I don't know if we have any visitors here, but our tradition, most traditions, it's what we're doing. We are following the Torah. We are symbolically putting the Torah on our lips and on our hearts. Reach out and touch with your talit, with your siddur, with your hand. Bring it to your lips. And turn as we follow it, because we should never turn our back on Torah. Thank you.
Mark, who had an eye on the rock. Blessed be the Lord, who is to be blessed. Everybody? Baruch had an eye on the rock, lay on the head. Blessed be the Lord, who is to be blessed forever and ever. Baruch had an eye on the rock, lay on the head. Baruch had an eye on the rock, Eloheinu melech olaham, asher rachabanu mikol ha'amim, v'natan lanu et torato. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us, has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Baikak, Karach, Ben Yitzhar, Ben Kehas, Ben Levi, Vedasan, Veaviram, Bene Elia, Veon, Ben Pelet, Bene Ruven, Vayakumu, Lifne Moshe, Vanashim, Ibne Yisrael, Kahmishim, Umasayim, Nisie, Ada, Kire, Meod, Anche Shem, Vayakahalu, Al Moshe, Val Aaron, Vayamru, Alehem, Rav Lachem, Ki Hola Eda Kalam Kadoshim. Now Korach, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Pe the son of Peleth, son of Reuven, took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel. 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown, and they gathered themselves together against Moshe and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Shabbat shalom. I'm going to continue reading about the rebellion of Korach. Um, 4 through 38. When Moses heard this, he fell on his face, and when then he said to Korah and all his following, and all his following, saying, "In the morning, Adonai will reveal who is His and who is holy. The one whom He will let come near Him will be the one He chooses to come near to Him. Do this, Korah, and you will." In your whole following, take for yourselves censers, put fire and incense into them in the presence of Adonai. Tomorrow, the man that Adonai chooses will be the Holy One. Your sons of Levi and the ones who have gone too far, Moses also said to Korah, Listen now, sons of Levi, isn't it enough that the God of Israel has set you apart from the community of Israel to bring you near to him and to do the work of the tabernacle of the Adonai and to stand before the community to minister to them? So he brought you close along with all your fellow sons of Levi. But you are seeking the priesthood too. Therefore, you and all your following are banding together against Adonai. Who then is Aaron, that you are grumbling against him? Then Moshe sent word to call uh, Darat and Abiram, the sons of Eliab. But they said, we will not come. Isn't it enough that you brought us from the land flowing with milk and honey only to kill us in the wilderness? And now you would lord it all over us? What's more, you haven't brought us into the land flowing with milk and honey, and given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Would you now gouge out our eyes? Of, uh, would you now gouge out the eyes of those men? We wouldn't come. Then Moses became very angry and said to Adonai, Do not accept their offering. I haven't taken from them a single donkey, nor have I wronged one of them. So Moses said to Korah, You and your whole fam following are to appear before Adonai. You, they, and Aharon tomorrow, each man will take his censer, and you are to put incense into them, 250 censers total. You are to present it before Adonai, and you and Aharon each present his censers. 
So each man took his censer, put fire and incense into it, and stewed them with Moshe and Aaron on the, at the entrance to the tent of meetings. When Korach and all his following had assembled in opposition to them at the entrance to the tent of meetings, then the glory of Adonai appeared to the entire assembly. Then Adonai spoke to Moshe and Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among the, this assembly, so that I may consume them at once. But they fell on their faces and cried out, O God, God of spirits of all flesh, in one man's, uh, if one man sins, will you be angry with the entire community? Then Adonai spoke to Moshe and said, Speak to the assembly, saying, Move away from the dwelling of Korach, Datan, and Abiram. Moshe got up and went to Datan and Abiram, the elders of the Israel, following after him. He warned the assembly, saying, Move away from the tents of these wicked men. Don't touch anything that is theirs, or you will be swept away because of all their sins. So they moved away from near the dwelling of Korach, Datan, and Abiram. Datan and Aviram came outside and were standing at the entrance of their tents and their wives and their children and their little ones. Moshe said, By this you will know that Adonai has sent me to do all, this, all these works, that they are not from my own heart. If, the, if every one of them, of these men, die a common death and experience what happens to all people, then Adonai has not sent me. But if Adonai brings about a new thing, and the earth opens her mouth and swallows them and everything that is theirs, and they go down alive into Sheol, then you will know that these men have despised Adonai. As soon as he finished saying all these things and ground split open under them, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them, along with their all their households, all of Korach's people, and all their possessions. They went down alive into Sheol. They and everything that was theirs, the earth closed over them, and they were gone from among the community. All Israel around them fled at their outcry, for they shouted, perhaps the earth will swallow us. Fire also came out from Adonai and consumed the 250 men offering the incense. Adonai spoke to Moshe, saying, Tell Eleazar, son of Aaron, the Kohen, to take the censers from the burning, because they are holy, and, the, and scatter the coals at a distance. As for the censers of these men who sinned at the cost of their lives, let them be taken and hammered into sheets as the covering of the altar, for they were presented before Adonai, so they are holy. They are to be assigned to Bene Israel. I'll be reading the Haftorah, um, starting in 1 Samuel 12, 1-20. Then Samuel said to all of Israel, Behold, I have listened to your voice and all you said to me, and have set a king over you. Now here is the king who will go before you while I am old and gray. Also here are my sons with you. I have gone before you from my youth to this day. Here I am, witnessed against me before Adonai and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken or whose donkey have I taken? Whom have I defrauded or whom have I oppressed? From whose hand have I taken a bribe to look the other way? I will restore you. They replied, You haven't defrauded us or oppressed us or taken anything from anyone's hand. Then he said to them, Adonai is then a witness against you, and his anointed is a witness this day that you have not found anything in my hand. He is a witness, they replied. Then Samuel said to the people, It is Adonai who appointed Moses and Aaron and who brought your fathers up from this land of Egypt. So now stand still so that I may plead with you before Adonai concerning all the righteous acts of Adonai, which he did for you and your fathers. When Jacob entered Egypt and your fathers cried out to Adonai, then Adonai sent Moses and Aaron, who brought your fathers out of Egypt and settled them in this place. But they forgot Adonai their God. So he gave them over to the hand of Sisera, captain of the army of Hazor, into the hand of the Philistines and into the hand of the king of Moab, who fought against them. So they cried out to Adonai and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken Adonai and have worshipped the Baalim and Ashtaroth. 
but now deliver us from the hand of our enemies, and we will worship you. Then Adonai sent Jerubal, Bedan, Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you from the hand of your enemies on every side, so that you may live securely. But now you saw Nahash, king of the Ammonites, marching against you. You said to me, No, but a king must reign over us, even though Adonai your God is king. Now therefore, here is the king whom you have chosen and whom you have asked for. And behold, Adonai has sent him as king over you. If you fear Adonai and worship him and listen to his voice and do not rebel against the command of Adonai, then both you as well as the king who reigns over you will be following Adonai your God. But if you do not listen to the voice of Adonai and rebel against the command of Adonai, then the hand of Adonai will be against you and against your fathers. Now stand by and see this great thing that Adonai will do before your eyes. It is not wheat harvest season today. I will call to Adonai that he may send thunder and rain. Then you will know and see that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of Adonai by asking for yourselves a king. So Samuel prayed to Adonai, and he sent thunder and rain that day. Then all the people greatly feared Adonai and Samuel. And all the people said to Samuel, Pray for your servants to Adonai your God, that we would not die. For we have added to all our sins this evil by asking for ourselves a king. Samuel said to the people, Fear not, indeed you have done this evil. Yet do not turn aside from Adonai, but worship Adonai with all your heart. Do not turn aside to go after empty things that cannot profit or deliver, for they are futile. But Adonai will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased Adonai to make you a people to himself. I'm going to jump to Isaiah 66, 17 to 23. Those who consecrate and purify themselves to go into the garden, following one who is among those who eat the flesh of pigs, rats, and other unclean things, they will meet their end together with the one they follow, declares the Lord. And I, because of what they have planned and done, am about to come and gather the people of all nations and languages, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and I will send some of those who survived to the nations, to Tarshish, to Libyans and Lydians to Tubal and Greece, and to the distant islands that have not fear, heard of my fame or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory among the nations, and they will bring all your people from the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord on horses and chariots and wagons and on mules and camels, says the Lord. They will bring them as the Israelites bring their grain offerings to the temple of the Lord in ceremonially clean vessels, and I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites, says the Lord. As the new heavens and the earth that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. And they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The worms that eat them will not die. The fire that burns them will not be quenched, and they will be loathsome to all mankind. For the Brit Shah. I'll be reading from Luke uh, uh, 19, uh, verse 11. So far we've heard stories of so God establishing kingdom and people rebelling and the responsibilities uh, to follow the Lord. And we have a similar thing message in this parable that Yeshua tells. As they were listening to this, Yeshua went on to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem, and they supposed that the kingdom of God was about to appear at once. Therefore he said, a certain nobleman went to a faraway land to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. And calling ten of his slaves, he gave them ten minas, the amount of money, and he said to them, do business until I come back. But his citizens detested him, and they sent a delegation after him, saying, we don't want this fellow to reign over us. When he returned after receiving the kingdom, he called for those slaves to whom he had given the money. He wanted to know how much business they had done. Now the first appeared, saying, Master, your one mina has made ten. The master said to him, Well done, good slave. Because you were faithful with so little, take charge over ten cities. Also the second slave came, saying, Your mina master made five. Then he also said to this one, You are likewise over five cities. But another came, saying, Master, here is your mina. I was keeping it safe in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a strict man. You take what you did not make, and reap what you did not sow. 
He said to him, by the words of your own mouth, I will judge you, you wicked slave. You knew that I was strict, taking what I did not make and reaping what I did not sow. Then why didn't you put my money in the bank so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then to the bystanders, he said, take the mina from him and give it to the one who has 10 minas. But they said to him, sir, he has 10 minas. I tell you to everyone who has, more shall be given. But from the one who doesn't have, even what he does have shall be taken away. But those hostile to me, who didn't want me to reign over them, bring them here and execute them before me. After saying these things, Yeshua was going on up ahead, up to Jerusalem. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Asher natan lanu Torah temet V'chaye olam nata batochinu Baruch atah Adonai Noten ha Torah Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the Torah of truth and has planted everlasting life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. I love when the Elfkins uh, do Torah. They read as much as they can of the Parsha section, uh, which I love. A little more commentary is nice, but I, I just I have a couple of things to say. There's really three main sections, and I go from a different Parsha. I do it from the Walk series, and what uh, also um, the the Tree of Life does weekly. Uh, and it's so interesting because in the first section that we read. It's, you got the, the, the rebellion, and I want you to think about this because we all have done this before. You've seen a pastor preach, and we're gonna, we'll talk more about it later downstairs at the Torah study, so you better come because I brought a ball and chain if the matzo ball isn't working uh, <laughs> over there. But think about, I want you to think about that rebellion and think about how we, like Korak, sometimes think we could do a better job. I could do a better job than that guy. You've probably been in job. So I want you to think about because that's a very large part of what's being said by the Lord. And you knew the punishment was intense. 14,700 died that day, and children as well. It's just terrible. You know, and we read, um, uh, obviously, in, in Samuel, where we hear he says, here I am. They asked for a king. And he rebukes them for asking for a king. And, you know, we have to have the attitude like Samuel. What did Samuel say? Here I am. Here I am. Hanani, which we'll talk about later as well. Uh, and then th there's one section you guys didn't read that I read in mine, which is about Ananias and Sapphira. And I thought it went well with the first two because these are guys who tried to pass themselves off as all that. And sometimes we like to pass ourselves off as more than we are. And I think we have to be real better about stuff like that. Isaiah about judgment. The Luke's story was, was wonderful. Uh, so I, I, thank you so much. I, I, like I said, I love when they do it. They do a great job. Uh, please put your hands towards the Elfkins, and let's pray for the Elfkins. Lord, we thank you for the Elfkins. We thank you that they are part of this congregation. We thank you that nobody knows Hebrew better than the Elfkins, and that they're here, and that they teach us so much, Lord. They teach all of us so much, and they add so much to this, the whole family, and we thank you for them. We thank you that, that you would continue to bless them, that you would bless their household, that you would bless those children, that you would bless the the, the, the the couple, the marriage, and everything, and bless them as they are in Squirrel Hill, and you would give them bo the boldness that they've asked for before to be able to touch that neighborhood of Squirrel Hill. And I pray this all in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. Now we're going to do the Misha, the Misha Beric, and um, I, I just want to know if there's anything, because I have a pen, if there's something I don't remember, because I love to pray. 
I might do it a little different than, than Sam Lee, but if there's any real requests here that we need to pray for, please let me know them now. Anybody at all, just sh just shout it out or raise your hand and I'll call you. Go, go for it. Okay, well, I, would, would anybody like to go over there and just do, do the prayer? And you could even, I, well, you can't bring the mic that close. But would you like to do it, any of the ladies, to just lay hands right now? You can do that right now. Just a quick, you, you just do a quick prayer. It doesn't matter. Go for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your answer to that prayer on the blood clot, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I guess I'll stay up here. I like to be closer. <laughs> I feel so far away when you stand up at that pulpit. I can't imagine preaching from there. Uh, is there any other prayer requests that anybody has? Sandy, it's okay. But we just want to, is there anything else? I'm sorry. And you said what was the day? No, no, the day you don't know? Tuesday. Tuesday. Thank you, Lord. We want to lift up Sandy to you. She's having a knee replacement. I don't know her relationship with you, but we ask for healing. If uh, we ask for healing there, if there's going to be surgery, we just ask that you just direct the doctors the surgeons to do a, 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 an amazing job, Lord, and that she would go through the healing process, Lord. You, you, Lord, you use surgeons, you use doctors, you use sometimes medication, which I don't like anyway, but you use all those things, Lord, but you also are a supernatural God. And to me, all the stuff that, that you have used through man is also sometimes look, seems very supernatural. And we thank you that you, right now, as she might be having anxiety about this, that you would really touch Sandy. Touch her and let her know that she is in your hands and that you would use this experience to either bring you to, to bring her to you or that she would have a stronger relationship with you. And I pray this all in Yeshua's name. Amen.
I'm, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I get that I got. I just don't know. But I'll, I'll pray for that. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for Joshua. We thank you that you would deliver from alcoholism. And, Lord, I don't know, again, his relationship with you. But we ask the most important thing isn't that he just gives up that addiction, but that he would be craving you. And if he's going to be addicted, that he'd be addicted to you. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you that you take care of that alcoholism because we all crave something. But, Lord, I pray that all of us in this room would crave you more than anything. In Yeshua's name, amen. So she had chemo, surgery, she had everything done. Oh, she didn't even have chemo. And what was her name again? Deborah. Deborah, okay. Lord, I want to uh, ask you, Lord, that we want to lift up Deborah, who uh, is in, I guess, remission now from stomach cancer, but she's still, uh, uh, the only thing that she could partake in is liquid. She's on a liquid diet. We ask that you do a quick healing with her. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, that, that we would, as we pray these things, not, please, let's, let us not forget to pray for these things during the week. We need to pray for each other. We need to pray for those inside the kingdom and also those outside the kingdom so they would come in when they see the miraculous touch that you put on them, Lord. All these things are for a purpose, Lord, and the greatest purpose is to bring people to you and have them have a stronger relationship with you. In Yeshua's name, amen. Okay, if there's nothing else, I just want to do a general prayer. If there's any names that you have of people of salvation, salvation is the, obviously the most important thing. Once we're in heaven, we don't have to worry about all this sickness stuff that we got to go through, right? But uh, if you have anybody you want to just shout out names, I'm going to pray. We'll pray for all of them. I'm not going to give all the names because I have my own, and I'm going to shout out. But, Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you. There's people that you put on all our hearts. And if there's any names out there, just, just shout them out. We want to pray for these people. You hear everyone, even if they're not shouted out. You know who we're all thinking about. I think about my dad who doesn't know you. I think, and we spent two weeks with him or ten days with him. And, Lord, he's, he's near the end of his life, and it, it just it hurts so much. And I pray that all of us would, would just be pained by the people that you've put in our lives, whether it's family members or friends or even neighbors or co-workers that don't know you, that you would just put a heaviness on our heart for their souls. And we want to lift that up to you right now. We know not everybody we pray for is going to get saved, but we know that our prayers avail us much. Those prayers of a righteous man and woman avail us much, and you hear those prayers, Lord. And we thank you. I also want to lift up my... my um, my children to you. I want to lift up my sister. And there's so many people that, that I don't even know the names of on Squirrel Hill that I come across every time I'm out there. They don't know you, Lord, and I want them to know you. And all the people that we are thinking about that are in our lives, we ask that the, for healings every which way, emotional, physical, but the most important is that spiritual healing of knowing their Messiah. I pray this all in the precious name of Yeshua. Vazot a Torah, Hashem Samoshe, Lifne Bene Israel, Api Adonai, Beyad Moshe. This is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. 
Hetaim hi Lamachazikim ba Vetomecheha Meushar Derahecha Darche Noam Vekol Nativoteha Shalom Hashivenu Adonai Elecha venashuva Chadesh, Chadesh amenu Chadesh amenu kekedem It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall return. Renew our days as of old. Do we even have any children for the blessing? May God bless you like Abram, Manasseh, and all those disciples, and make you like them. Amen. 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 We're having an own day because people got food and ready to eat. You want to eat afterwards? I guess so. We got Torah study. I got the matzo ball, and if, and if, if you give me a hard time, we're going to start throwing this at you. Like that? That's the stop sign. No, I forgot to turn this on. Uh, again, well, let's see. I guess the restore has to do with what's going on this weekend. Uh, but you see all that stuff. I don't have to read it to you. You could look at it. You could take a picture of it. You could check it out online. And I guess we're going to move on because there it is. It's right there, even though it's last week's. And uh, so don't, you better all be there for Torah study. You know, that's one thing I always tell people. It's great that we read, but let's go deeper. That's one of the things I, I just want to tell you guys. I love to go deeper, and I hope you guys want to go deeper. Whatever scriptures you read, you could read John 3.16 a million times, and the million and one time you're going to get something that you didn't get the first million. And I want you to all think about that. Take this stuff seriously. So if you can make Torah, if you want to eat, see, it's, we have a lot of fun down there. Do we have fun down there? We do. So please come. Um, and I guess there's nothing else except, the, the, I guess, the worship team, right? You ready to start some worship? Let's do some worship, man. You guys ready to stand? Oh, I apologize. Go ahead. She still can if she wants. It's all right. We have, a, we, we have a great crowd here today. I didn't know because David told me when he preached last week there were like 10 or 12 people there. I, I, before I start, because I know I'll forget if I don't know it now, we have two birthday boys today. Did you know that? Me, I don't know if you want to play a little chorus, but we're gonna, we, we have two birthday boys. I guess we could just sing it. We have good enough voices. 
Do you know who they are? We got Rob, and then our awesome Rob, which did the Torah stuff today. Nothing, there's nothing, no greater privilege than carrying the Torah. It, you know, it's a great privilege. I don't know if you think about that. If you're asked to do it, it's like, me? Wow! That's awesome, all right? Doesn't it feel awesome to hold that thing in your arms? And the other one is our amazing cameraman, Pat. And they both have the birthdays. I think one of them is 29, the other one's 39. Is that right? I don't know which one of these is older. Something like that. So let's all just sing to them. We're going to celebrate more downstairs with a cake. Am I correct? Okay, I hope that wasn't a surprise. Yeah, if it was a surprise, I blew it. What are you going to do? You blew it. Okay, so let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Robin Pat. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Two awesome people who serve Shiresh and, more importantly, serve our Lord. Let's do worship. Please stand and worship with everything you got as we enter the throne room. So one thing we're going to hear about in the message, if I'm not mistaken, and my husband and I communicated correctly, um, is about fellowship and unity in the body. There's nothing better than unity in the body. And that how do we show that we are one in Yeshua, that we are one in the Ruach, but by love, right? Loving each other and loving those outside of the body. So we're going to sing about that.
by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each other's pride. And they'll know we're Yeshua's We just want to come into your presence. We want to further come into your presence, I should say. We want your glory to be filled in this place. We want to go deeper, 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 deeper. No matter what it is we are experiencing, no matter what it is, our circumstances, whatever we bring in here, we just want to lay it at your feet.
Yeshua. And keep my eyes above the waves when oceans roll. My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. I will call. Let's just say that again. in the name of Yeshua sometimes when I have no idea what to pray and I'm just overwhelmed with fear and anxiety and just the, the troubles of the day I just sometimes just cry out Yeshua 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 there is power in the name and that the Ruach HaKodesh intercedes for us Let's just continue to enter in. Let's continue to press in. Let's continue to press in that we are no longer slaves. I had an actual prophetic word um, spoken over me by Patty Juster, which was an honor and a blessing. This weekend, or this, these days at the conference, and I believe that it, it was for me, but it, was, it can also be for you that to don't get stuck in what you think people believe of you or see you as. But she prophetically said that God wants me, and, I, and again, this, this could speak to many of you, God wants you, me, to see our identity in Him and that our countenance is in Him and that Yeshua is more powerful than anything that the enemy would throw at us, any affliction, any stronghold, that Yeshua is Lord of our mind, of our hearts, of our souls. And no matter what we think of ourselves, that we take every thought captive to the obedience of Yeshua, our Messiah that we can start seeing our identity in Him, that we are no longer slaves to fear or anxiety or what others think of us. And let's just come. And I ask that if you feel really just convicted or that you just need to press in further, that you want to be away from the distraction of those around you, even just come up. That's what the pillows are for in the front. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till. issues if you come forward.
There's power even in our song. There's power in worship. The worship was in front of the army. And we just need to come as we fight a battle. This is how we fight our battles. That you unravel me, Lord, with a melody. And you are surrounding us with a song. You unravel me.
voices. Let's shout it. Let's just sing it out as a prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. You know something? It's amazing how God works. I'm a I'm a acronym kind of guy. <laughs> you know, she didn't know that. Yeah. You know? Do you know if you change the order of the worship songs, you're gonna like this. If you change the words of the uh, worship song or change yeah change the order of the worship songs, you have the word scud, Sh slaves, right? Uh, clean heart, uh, unity, and deeper. Do you know what the word scud means? You're going to love this. It means weapons. You know, Scud missiles. Wow. Isn't that awesome? I mean, th does it give you God bumps? I mean, that's what God's always saying. He says, look for these things. It's there. I'm everywhere, man. I'm in the numbers. I'm in the word. I'm all over the place. And my favorite, my favorite line is we, we're ready to start this. Oop, it's not on yet. Um, my favorite line is I'm ready to start this. It was a, uh, I mean, you could read it all over the word of God, but... Uh, there's a quote by uh, Abraham Kuyper, and I love this because when people start to argue about, oh, you know, uh, the enemy's taking over, and this is happening, and it's an equal battle, blah, 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 blah. You know, he wrote this thing because he was dealing with that in his time because he was in, and he be went from theology, pastorship, he was a pastor and the theologian, and then he became a politician to really be able to speak to a larger amount of people about things, uh, about the Lord. Oh. You think we could correct that? We better. Uh, <laughs> and he said, God looks down on at every square inch of the earth. You've probably heard me say it, but it was Kuiper who came up with it. God looks down from every square inch of the earth, and he shouts out, mine! Never forget that. The world is his. It's not the enemies. It's not anybody else. It's not any politicians. It is his. I don't care who's behind, you know, you believe in the Illuminati or you believe the power is this or George Soros that. I don't care. God is in charge of every square inch of the earth. Do we have a battle? Of course we do. What did we just find out? I love that, right? Weapons. What was, what was, what was the worship team doing? Those are all weapons. That's part of that. That's one of the great weapons. Why do you start with worship? After you hear worship, you're, you can even handle listening to me afterwards. <laughs> See? <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I'm going to move this. And we got that. That is cool, cool, cool. What? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I am, but I'm going to move this. Yeah, I use the clicker only. And let's see. What the heck is caught? There we go. I think I can lift it above it. Could you kind of help me do that? Are we good? Now we're good. Now I can be here and get closer to you. I like to be close. I want to be where you guys are. Let me bring everything over here. OK, I have, I have a little present for somebody. If you, oh, I better do this. 
he always, Pat tells me sometimes I drop the mic. You know, that's because that's my attitude. I like to drop. Uh, but if someone can answer, if someone can answer this question, and I said the answer, how many people did God strike down in this Parsha section? The exact number that I gave you, I don't know the exact number if it was exactly that, but the number that I gave you that's from Scripture, how many died? She knew. Oh, there you go. Look, this is what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the Restore magazine. These normally are not printed. These normally are not printed. They printed it up for it, and you're not there, and I know how much you wish you were there. You get the Restore magazine, which is awesome. There's great art. Wait a minute, and you don't just get that. You get this, and I know how much you love this. Trust in the Lord. That's yours. There you go. See what you get when you come here? Okay. Presents, that's right. God always has presence for us. And, you know, Mia forgot something. Dan Juster also gave Mia a word. We were having, we were like meeting with them, and, and there was uh, six of us. There was the Lewises, there was us, and um, there were the Justers. We were all sitting in a room, and Dan looks at Mia, and he goes, you know, me and you, we got big brains. And the rest, yeah, and the, the four of us are looking at each other like, what the heck are we, mashed potatoes or something? What is this? We have normal, oh, we were told we have normal brains. But, but Dan and Mia have big brains. I didn't know that. I should have known, right? But so oh, be aware of that when you talk to Mia. She's got a big brain like Dan Justa. <laughs> he really did say this. That is not a lie. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I am, I'm, I'm excited to do this. Uh, believe it or not, I'm going to do this again tomorrow in a church. Always pray for that, you know. One of the things, when I go into churches, I want them to understand why it's so important that more Jewish people like myself and Mia are in the body of Messiah and affecting what goes on, you know, in the entire body. Because... We all know this. I mean, my man, Ned, loves to talk about it. He says, you want to see revival? Care about the Jewish people, salvation. Because it ain't going to happen until we do. Now, look, I'm, I'm putting this. I, I wish every, everybody that was in the body could, could hear this. And maybe there's other people out there who, who are saying it the way that you say it, Ned. But if you want to see it in your lifetime, I mean, I don't know the time. God knows the time right now when it's going to happen. But I realize that people like Ned and I, because we're old farts, okay? Yeah, you know, let's be honest. We might not see it in our lives, but we know it's going to happen. I mean, you know, prophet, when God says, I'll never leave or forsake you, when, when God says that his covenant is forever, not just like, you know, 100 years, 1,000 years, it's forever. It's forever. We know that... Romans 9 to 11, which we use all the time in Messianic, uh, you know, congregations and to explain to the Gentiles their importance to the Jewish people and in the body. Obviously, we're all important, but the point, the point being is if you want to see the end, then let's do what we need to be doing. Because otherwise, it's going to happen when you're gone. And I would love to see revival happen while I'm here. I don't know if it will, but I would love to. Who, does, who wants to see it in their lifetime? It would be awesome. Who's ready to die for it in their lifetime? Well, a little less hands. Uh, <laughs> but that's the attitude. I mean, there's a, I, I give you this line, and I got to get going with this. I give you this line all the time. Art Katz, who's a Jewish believer, man, on fire. If you ever go on YouTube, look for Art Katz sermons. He said... Such a simple thing, and you could read scriptures that are in the same, you know, pick up your cross and die daily and stuff. But he said, I do not want to die a modest death. And again, you've heard me say this, but he said it. But I want to live a modest life. That means, are you willing to live on the edge? And we spoke about this over the weekend. So let me get started on this. Now, I'm going to tell you how this happened. I, I, wasn't gonna do, I was going to do something different. And you see it says the three shortest books of the Bible. Now, the reason it says that, because I wanted to explain to you that I had to prepare three sermons, and the pastor, who's Dan, Dan is the one who just lost his, his wife, Connie, and 
some of you know, I don't know if everybody knows, he just lost his second wife and he's on a little vacay in Canada, so I'm gonna take over for him for three weeks. And he, you know, he said, maybe we could do a series. So he came up with the three shortest books in the Bible. Now the order is third John, second John, and Philemon. I said, let's go opposite, and I'm glad we did because this is, Philemon is perfect for everything that's going on. It's just a perfect book, and, and I want you to see that. It is an amazing book. It, you know, and we ask ourselves, and I, I want you guys to answer me. You know, if anybody wants to throw out an answer, it's okay. But we love to read these short books. Don't we, but do we like to hear sermons on these short books? Because what's the thing we're going to think? Where's the meat? Where's the meat? You remember the commercial, where's the meat? Where's the beef? Okay, so I said it wrong. Where's the beef? But yeah, that doesn't sound right when we're asking about the uh, spiritual stuff. Where's the beef? But where is the meat? Where is the beef? Okay? And we, there is so much of it here. And I want you to see that. There's a lot of meat here. Okay, we'll call it beef, but there's a lot of it here. But this is the third shortest book in the entire Bible. It is 25 verses, and it's power-packed. And just so you get an idea what some of the people have said about this. Now, you might not know some of these names, but these are guys that I've all read. I've had to read, in fact, over the years. Uh, Alistair Wilson. Paul emphasizes the transformation of relationships that results when someone becomes a Christian. Well, we could say messianic but he said Christian. J.B. Lightfoot, great writer, okay, theologian. The, epi the epistle to Philemon holds a unique place among the apostles' writings. It's the only strictly private letter which has been preserved. You know he's written more. Why is this one preserved? Let's find out today, right? Why is this one preserved when you know he did others? Understand what that is when you write a personal letter to somebody. It's something, that it's deeper, isn't it, right? Think about the letters that you write to someone that are personal, not just, hey, having a great time down in uh, Florida or wherever, but just deep. Marion May Thompson. Although Philemon contains little explicit theology, it reflects a deep theological understanding of the renewal that God has effected in Christ, Messiah, and the consequences for human relationships. I want you to look. You know, th that's the point. When you look at a book like this and you go, what the heck's it doing in here? Why is it in the Bible? God knows what he's doing. We might not always understand it, but God knows what he's doing. Again, Wilson, Alistair Wilson, it is reasonable to assume that the Christology laid out so fully in Colossians lies at the background of Paul's uh, addresses, as Paul addresses Philemon. Understand that this letter was, a, was probably delivered at the same time Okay, and it was probably written in, in Rome, prison in Rome, at the same time. So that's an important thing to understand that. So even though it doesn't have all the theology, and the reason I say that is you know the whole church heard, heard this letter. It wasn't just, it wasn't just uh, Philemon. The whole church heard this letter. That's important to know. And one of the things I really believe, Philemon is about the essential dignity of human beings made in the image of God to look past things, to look past things, look to the deeper, man, I mean, never forget that, look deeper, and that's why you're all gonna come downstairs whether you like it or not. Uh, Paul's letter to Philemon is a picture of forgiveness. Okay, a little bit of the background, the authors, you have a little bit of Timothy and a little bit of Paul adding to what this letter is all about, probably around 62 AD, he was probably a prisoner in Rome, don't quote me on it, but he probably was because I read enough stuff that many, most believe. It's personal for Paul to Philemon, but also to the whole church. So think about that. He's, you know, he's a sneaky little dude, Paul, because he pleads in this letter, and we're going to find out about that kind of stuff because all this stuff is important for us to understand. The outline, real quickly. Oh, first we have a little shot here. Philemon, faith that changes things. And how many of you know the book? You know the book, 25 verses, okay, know the book, know the book, and know why it's here. Study those 25 verses, and in light of Colossians, it makes a lot more sense when you say it. it's the same theology that he's kind of trying, because they know it, they just read the book of Colossians, or maybe the letter came first, I don't know. Um, but just a quick outline, we're going to go over this stuff pretty quickly. 
you've got the first three is an opening greeting. The next uh, four is thanksgiving and prayer. Then you've got the, the, the body of this is about the request, which is 15 verses. And the, the, first, the first half is uh, the relationship Onesimus and Paul have created. The rest of those, 17 to 22, is the relationship between Onesimus and Philemon. I, you know, and it's amazing when you think of how he wrote the Man, he's a sneaky guy. You know, when the Lord said, be sly as a, a, a serpent and gentle as a dove, he meant it. <laughs> you know, we got to know how to get through it, right? When you, I witness all the time to people, and you got to figure out, how am I going to get through this person? What should I say? You know, and that's exactly what this boy did. He asked the Lord for the right words, and he gave it to him. And then it ends with a closing greeting. And as we always anticipate, the power of Philemon, tag your it. Okay, and it's very simple. You might even see already what it, where it comes from. <laughs> it comes from a very simple thing. First, we got tag. Tag is, follows this. You've got thanksgiving. Okay, you've got the appeal. And then you've got the greeting that we see here. And it's important to kind of understand all those things. Um, so we'll go over each one that we have there. The first one we're going to have is Thanksgiving. And I love this quote from Spurgeon. I want you to really think about what he's saying and if you do this. Do you do this? Not that happiness is the goal. But if you feel yourself, just everything is a bummer. It is not how much we have, but how much we enjoy that makes happiness. Do you enjoy everything in your life? Do you embrace everything in your life? Okay? And that's the thing. True thanksgiving will put a smile on your face, even through the tragedies. And people who have gone through tragedies understand what I'm talking about. We all have. I shouldn't say it like that. Everybody in this room has gone through a tragedy, whatever it is. How do you go through it? Are you able to have that joy in your heart? Because happiness, I always feel uncomfortable, but that, that's the quote with that word. I like the word joy better when it comes to that. But how much do we enjoy? Do we embrace everything that God puts in our life? That's what thanksgiving is all about. So that first thing, thanksgiving. We see that in there, we first see that it's written in Timothy. We also see it as, we, oh, you know what? You know what I didn't do? Do you believe I didn't read the book of Philemon? Am I kidding myself? Why didn't someone, why didn't you remind me to read the book? Yeah, she didn't. You know something? You said, we, that's the way you're supposed to start is read the book and listen carefully, guys. Boy, I'm bad. Bad boy. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to read the book. That's the first thing we want to do. And I should have had it bookmarked because this, I left my Bible at home. I don't have a bookmark. I told me, I said, oh, no, I left my Bible at home. Oh, you know something that is? I'm, I'm crouching here. And you I'm talking like this. I'm talking like this. <laughs> okay, straighten up. Philemon. Let's read this now. I don't have it on there, so you can look. I like when people bring Bibles, but if you have to look on your device, look on your device. As you could see, I am in the Tree of Life version, so we're going to read it from there before we move on. Greetings to a house group. Paul, a prisoner of Messiah Yeshua, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved and fellow worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the community that meets in your house. Grace to you and shalom from God our Father and the Lord Messiah Yeshua. That is the greeting. The next thing we say is a thanksgiving. Thanks for love and comfort. I thank my God always when mentoring you in my prayers, hearing of your love and the trust that you have toward the Lord Yeshua and all the Kodeshim, or all his disciples. May the fellowship of your faith become effective with the recognition of 
all the good that is ours in Messiah. For I've received much joy and comfort in your love, brother, because the heart of the Kodoshim has been refreshed through you. Now it's time that we read the um, request. And this is beautiful. Listen carefully. Think about it next time you want to write a letter like this, right? Request for Philemon's runaway. Therefore, though I have plenty of boldness in Messiah in order it, to order you to do what's right, yet for love's sake, I appeal to you instead. I, Paul, am an old man and now also a prisoner belonging to Messiah Yeshua. I beg you for my child Onesimus, for whom I became a spiritual father while in chains. He once was useless to you, but now is useful both to you and me. I sent him back to you. He is my very heart. Beautiful stuff, right? <clears throat> I really wanted to keep him with me so that on your behalf he might serve me while I am in chains for the good news, but I did not want to do anything without your consent so that your goodness wouldn't be by force but by free will. Oh, he's a sneaky guy. For perhaps he was separated from you for a while in order that you might have him back forever. No longer, now this is when he writes now, uh, after this one, no longer is a slave, but more than a slave. I think we sung about that, didn't we? As a beloved brother, especially to me, but even more so to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Now he's going to talk about their relationship. And this is missing Philemon. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. But if he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay. Not to mention, <laughs> so Jewish, right? Not to mention that you owe me your very self. Yes, brother. Let me have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Messiah. And then the added request and farewell. Having confidence in your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than what I say. At the same time, also prepare a guest room for me, for I hope that through your prayers I will be given back to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Messiah, Yeshua greets you. So to Mark, Aristarchus, Demas and Luke, my fellow workers, may this grace of our Lord Yesh Messiah Yeshua be with your spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of this word, which took me long enough to read. But we ask it that you really just open it up to us in Yeshua's name. Amen. So back. <laughs> we start with thanksgiving. And as we know, we know that it starts off, okay? We know it starts off with the, the, um, the greeting, and it ends with the greeting, but you know, obviously I, I can't do an acronym you know, with the G on top. It just doesn't make sense. Okay, so we're going to start with Thanksgiving. And we know that it talks about that Thanksgiving in 4 to 7, as we just read, about thanking God for everything that he's given them. And we know that the Bible tells us a lot about thanksgiving. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. And we know in 1 Thessalonians, which is one of my favorites, 5, 16 to 18, in everything, in everything, give thanks, for that is what God wants from you, who are united with the Messiah, Yeshua. Okay. Now, if any of you want some advice how to write an appeal letter, okay, Paul was an expert at it. So study this letter, and you'll know how to write an appeal letter, right? Whatever it is, you're, I'm sure that all of you have something, right? You have something in mind you'd like to appeal for? Okay, there you go. I, I know I like appeals for my, my dad's salvation. If I could put that in a beautiful letter, that would be nice. So appeal is pretty much the heart of this whole thing, as we see. There are lots of scriptures. I want you to really think. It's all over the place. Paul does it a lot. 
and also the uh, writer of Hebrews, which I didn't write because some people believe it's Paul. I, I don't necessarily care, but it doesn't seem like it is. But he also wrote, I appeal to you uh, to accept my exhortation, is what the Hebrew says, but we don't have that in here. But it starts off, and we heard Philemon's, or uh, Paul's appeal to a, uh, Philemon. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Messiah. In effect, God is making his appeal through us. Oh, man. Do you feel? Do you feel the weight? I want you to feel. You need to feel the weight. He is making his appeal through us. What we do is appeal on the behalf of the Messiah. And what is that? Be reconciled to God. Do you, do you make that appeal? Do you make that appeal to people? Okay? We need to do that. Be reconciled to Messiah. Then we see four more times that he says, I appeal to you. Because he says it in this, in, depending on the um, translation, I think ESV, it's, he says, I appeal to you twice. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. Do you do that? He's appealing to us. I appeal to you, brothers, by our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, we're going to say that right, and by the love of the, of the Ruach, to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf. Also Romans 15.30. Again in Romans, in the last chapter, I appeal to you, brothers, watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. I appeal to you. Do we do that? I mean, sometimes it's like we want to be so accepting. Look, the world is accepting enough. We don't need to accept everything like the world. Because if we do, we become like the world, don't we? You know, and the first one we read is, 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 is sacrifice in your bodies or as a living sacrifice in 12.1. And in Corinthians, he also says it. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same judgment, an appeal to unity. So you see all these appeals. And like I said, in, in uh, Hebrews, which I didn't put down here, it's an appeal to listen to the exhortation. And if you know anything about um, Hebrews, it's filled with exhortations. All right. Well, how to make an appeal. Just real quickly, we're going to go over this quickly. We're not going to get d deeply into it. But you need to be persuade people. How do you persuade people? Okay. And this, this includes witnessing, obviously. It doesn't have to be a letter. Okay. We need to build rapport. And some of us, believe me, I don't vet enough sometimes when I'm asking someone, come on the street with me. Do what I do. I try to do and some of these people, the first thing you want to do is get in an argument with someone on the street. They talk politics. They th and it's like, no, stay away from it. You've got to build rapport. Build rapport with someone. You want them to like you, you know. If you have a sense of humor, tell a joke. It helps, you know. Uh, and then the other one is convince the heart, the mind, and the intellect. That's a tough one. Sometimes it takes time. It's not just one sitting, right? You have to take your time with this. And if you, that's what's so great about letters, right? Yeah, and you could take, take weeks, sometimes a month. I mean, I don't know how long it takes Paul to write this, to really think about the words you want to use, to, to really convince someone in their heart, in their mind, in their intellect, that they're going, yeah, I get it. Because we know from the result of this, from what we know, this worked. This letter really worked. It changed. Uh, Philemon's heart towards Onishmus, and we know how Onishmus was obviously changed. The power of transformation. These are the things we see that happen. And this is, doesn't just include Onishmus, this is all of us. He went what? From useless to useful. How many of you feel that you were useless and then the Lord made you useful? Isn't that what he does? Right. I mean, all of us can say that. What was the other one? He was a slave, and now he's free, or he's still a bond servant to who? Yeshua. But he's not a slave to sin. He's not a slave to unrighteousness. He is now a slave, as it says, to righteousness. He's now a slave to his Messiah. 
And the next one, he was a bond servant, but what did he say? Now I want you to look at him as a friend, as a brother. I think that's beautiful, you know? It's such a beautiful thing. I mean, we all know somebody. We know the wayward sons. We all know prodigals in our life, you know? And it's a difficult thing. We've had these conversations, me and I have these conversations a lot with people who have really hurt us, who have wronged us, and even wronged other people that sometimes it bothers us that we see people wrong other people. And, and it's like, what do we do? You know, we gotta love them. But we talked about this, you know, at, at lunch yesterday about, about the boundary issue, you know? It's like you can continue to love someone and still put up the boundary, you know, whether it's I lent you money, you didn't give it back, I'll never lend you money again, but I still love you, brother. You know, and it, whatever the situation is, you know what that is. But the bottom line is to turn someone from that bond servant or that slave into somebody who's a friend, and that's exactly what happened in this book. All right, the next one was learning to greet. I love all those greetings that we have there. We see the guys with the mask. Anybody still doing that? I've seen it in the street, believe me. I still go to, we've, we've gone to churches where it's like, uh, just the elbow. <laughs> I said, okay, you don't want me to hug you, I won't hug you. Now what the, what the one thing is, I don't get many people who let me give them a holy kiss. Have you been holy kissing anybody? Anybody's doing the holy kiss thing? We got holy kissers back there. Watch out, watch out. They might give you a holy kiss after service today. <laughs> but it is interesting. You look at the ways to greet, how important greeting is. Did you ever think about it? It seems like such a simple thing, right, greeting. Do you realize how important a greeting is? I, 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 I love this. And I don't know if I, I think I put it up here. I hope I put that. because Oh, yes, I did, didn't I? OK, yeah. Greeting, if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. And this is what the Lord said. He says, don't worry about just your, greet people, be loving to people that, you know, I mean, look, you might, they might hate you, but you better not hate them. You could dislike things, but man, you greet them with love. If someone's wronged you, whether it's a brother or whoever, greet them. And greet them with love. Always have to greet them with love, not just the people who are in the body. All the brothers send their greetings. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Uh-oh, I guess we're commanded. Are you guys all ready for holy kisses today? You guys? Guy on guy? No? We're going to stay away from that? Okay. Uh, listen to this Hungarian, uh, Hungarian proverb. I love this. And this, this could, I, 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 you can't see the idea in scripture. The way you greet someone determines how he will welcome you. Did you ever have a, uh, you know, you, you get that greeting, you were in a bad mood and you wish you could take it back? Or you said the wrong thing and it's like, zoop, I wish I could just suck that, that word. Words are powerful, man. And greetings are powerful. I want you to understand, greetings are powerful. And I love this. The way you greet someone determines how he will welcome you. You want to put a smile on their face? You want them to be welcoming to you? Greet them well. Greet them well. Just a couple of things just to understand the book. I don't know how many of you go deeply into books. I like to go deeper because there are questions that theologians have had over the years about this book. Like why did uh, Onesimus leave uh, Philemon? Calvin and many others, well, he was a runaway thief and a slave. You know, it makes sense, right? Stole, some, stole something, so he ran away. Okay. How did Onesimus come to meet Paul? Um, and one of the things that Carson and Moo was like asking, well, is that possible? How did Onesimus just happen to run into a man in prison who knew his own master? But we know something. There's no such thing as a coincidence. It's a God incident, so maybe, right? You know, if God had plans, it could have happened that way. How many times do we, something like this happens, you go, man, what a small world. Well, I, had to, I like to tell you, it was a much smaller world back then. So it's possible. But he, they asked the question. Onesimus uh, was with Paul because Philemon sent him to Paul, which is what David Powell writes as an explanation. How did Onesimus meet Paul? Seeking refuge, which makes sense, too. He, he knew there was a relationship. He's so grateful. And these are just some of the theologians, just so they can try to understand the book. And you do want to understand the book. You want to understand the history, what happened. I like this 
Mia said, it's a long quote, but sometimes people come up to me and say, thank you for the quotes, because they really kind of helped me. This quote helped me. Maybe it don't help you. You got such a big brain, you don't need to read a quote. You understand it already. God, God taught Paul humility. I love this. And we're going to go somewhere else as we teach this, because I want to get into this whole body of appealing, what it means about the person who's making the appeal, because that's important to us. And it's some of the stuff that we learned this, this week. I, get, I was going to say weekend, but it was this week. Sending back a runaway slave and thief, he supplicates pardon for him. He supplicates pardon for him. But in pleading this cause, he discourses about Christian, well, let's say messianic forbearance, gentleness, moderation, and kindness. With such ability, with such ability, ask for that, pray for that ability that he appears to speak about the interests of the whole church, just like the book of Colossians, right? He kind of pulls the theology from Colossians into this book. Interests of the whole church rather than the private affairs of a single individual. Isn't that the way you want to look at things? It's not just a one-on-one -on -one thing. How does this apply to the church? How, why is it important that this, church, that this letter is read to the church? And that's the way he wrote that, in a way that it would, plus it put a little bit of pressure on him, right, to do the right thing, which is very interesting. <clears throat> in behalf of a man of the lowest condition, he demeans himself, I think about it, he demeans himself so modestly and humbly that nowhere else is the meekness of his temper painted in a more lively manner, Calvin. You understand that? Get, what do you want to get out of this book? See that. Who, who is Paul? You want to understand who Paul is? You, you could read the wonderful theology in Romans, you know, and how it speaks to messianic stuff. You can, you can read and just tremendous book and, and the way he talks about theology, the way he talks about the things that were going on that we need to be careful of. But to understand his heart. And I want you now to understand the road that this man took to humility, okay? Not going to read these. You know the stories. If you don't know the stories, you should know them. And if you don't, read them. I gave you the scriptures here. Um, the road to humility. The road to Damascus. That was the first humbling thing. <laughs> Could you imagine? And it was funny. He didn't know. He said, who are you, Lord? Who are you? And then he told him he was kicking against the goats, uh, you know. Uh, which hurts when you kick, you kick against coach. I don't know if you know it, but he didn't care. He thought he was right. He thought he was right. He thought he was all that. I want you to understand the, the humility and, and how it, it relates to all of us, what, what we have to go through to be brought down low. God wants to bring us all down low so we stop looking down and we start looking up. Okay? And not just up to God, but up to people too. That's part of it. It's not just looking up to God. It's looking up to people. It's being able to see people in a different light, not just the Lord. The imprisonments and the beatings. This scripture, whenever I read this, it just, oh my, could you imagine? This is what this man went through for the Lord. I want you to hear this. And this is a guy who was ready to kill, kill Christians, kill all those who believed in, in Yeshua. Just get rid of them. Imprison them. Are they servants of Messiah? I'm a better one. And it, what's crazy, do you believe he's saying that humbly? He is. I am talking like a madman with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews 40, the 40 lashes less one, because they thought 40 would kill, but 39, they'll be okay. <laughs> crazy thinking, right? Um, three. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. Anybody gone through anything like that for the Lord yet? Anybody? Nobody? Come on. Nobody's done any stuff. Don't worry. But are you ready to? Are you ready to? If you live long enough, you might have to. Okay? And the thorn in the flesh. That's always my favorite. That, that is what he will say is the one thing that humbled me and kept me humble. Kept me humble. So to keep me from becoming conceited, 
because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations. This man was in the third heaven. That's the place apparently we're all going to be, is the third. When you look at the first, you know, you look at the clouds, and then you go. But the third heaven is where we're going to be in eternity. That, wow, could you imagine? I mean, people who've died say they've had that experience. I mean, who knows? I can't den deny that it was. But I know when he says it, he meant it. So passing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh. Man, this is important. I want you to see this. Who gave, him the th who gave him the thorn? A messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being conceited. <gasps> get, get this, get this, this, this Satan away. Get him away from me. And God's like, what? What did God say? Nope, sorry. <laughs> I love it, man. A thorn was given me in the flesh. A messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. Leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses so that the power of Messiah may rest upon me. For the sake of Messiah, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, I am strong. Are you ready to tell the Lord that? No one said that you can't. He pleaded three times. No one said you can't plead. Get out of me. But be ready for the answer. It might not be the one you expect. Because I know people who believe the only way is to get it out. Not to accept maybe, maybe there's a chance God's doing something here. Because we all can be conceited. All of us. Believe you me. I love this. Listen, this is things he's written about. This is all from the apostle. What did he say? He got to this place. This is the place he got to. I am the least of the apostles. Paul said he's the least of the, does anyone believe he was the least of the apostles? He believed it, and he meant it. I am the very least of all the saints. I am the foremost of all sinners. Have you gotten to this place? Get to that place. Get to that place. That's what God wants us. Do you want him to use you? You better get to that place if you want him to use you. I'm telling you, man, with all my heart, I know this. I know this. Take it from a guy who knows what it's like to be a narcissist. Look at this. From a narcissist to me, Anoki, to Hanani, which we read today, Hanani. Samuel said, Hanani, here I am. And we also said it when he was a boy, didn't he? Here I am. Just tell the Lord you're here. What did, what did Isaiah say? Here I am. What did Moses say? Not me. <laughs> but understand this. This is what we want to do. It starts off, all of us start off this way. It's about me. It's about me. Anybody kind of like that? <gasps> Still? There are people who are still like that. Yes, I'm still like that. Mia, am I still like that? All right, she doesn't like to admit it, but I get it. Mia, are you sometimes like that? Okay. Even with that big brain of yours, you're still like that sometimes. Maybe the big brain gets in the way. Who knows? I'm going to kid you about that forever. Uh, <laughs> so, it's in jest. We kid, we kid. It's all about me, but you want to move from that place. Now, it might, you know, look, I want you to understand this as we go on. Romans 6 to 8 talks about I was there, but then I had to do it again, and then I had to do it again, and then I had to do it again. You hear me? I had to go through it again and again and again because, because there's that thing that happens with the flesh. Oh, man, that freaking flesh doesn't stop wanting to pop itself. It's ugly head. It really... Does the flesh rear its ugly head with you every day, or is it just me? Every day it rears its ugly head. So it's a cycle. So I want you to look at this as a cycle, but we, we are moving towards. Because you realize what the towards is? When, when does the true here I am really happen? 
Does it happen in this life? Not really, because there's always something that's going to bring us back to, it's about me. But eventually, and we will be there less. We'll, this is the point. The point is we will be less than it's about me. We'll be more about who am I that you would use me? You know, think about, you think about Moses was the perfect example. Who am I? You want to use me. And that's the word that he used. He used me and okay. Who am I? I'm nothing. I am nobody. But you want to leave that place too to understand he does want to use you, and you want to get to a place where, Hanini, Hanini. Does anybody want to get to that place? Hanini. Well, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you guys, as we close up with this thing, to do that. I want you to come up here. I want you to understand, uh, you know, maybe this is the thing I should keep up there because it's simple, and it's a great, just looking at the progression. Knowing it's a cycle, but the progression, I'm going to be less of that top one. I'm going to be that middle one, but I'm really moving towards the always here I am. Here I am. Because you've got to get out of the pity part of I am nobody, right? You've got to get out of that. How can God use you until you realize that he wants to use you? Do you realize that? It's God wants to use me? Yes! He wants to use even you. Well, let's put it this way. He wants to use even me. <laughs> Oh, God, this is so, it's just awesome stuff. So I just want to, as we pray, I want you to understand this whole tag you and that's why I said tag you it, because it's like, I want to be it, I want you to be that. It's the ripple, right? I want you to be that. So we don't just need to pray that we, we need to pray for the body, we need to pray for each other, that that's what we're becoming. We're becoming these people. And as we've talked about, understand the importance of thanksgiving and embracing everything. Understand the importance of the appealing that we do. We need to appeal to people, and people need to appeal to us. If you see something go on in somebody's life, if you see someone wayward, we're appealing to them. Come back. We need to appeal to ourselves sometimes, don't we? Mitch, get it together. But we want to... And that, that greeting, which it starts off with, we'll be honest, and, but it also ends with it. Understand how important these three things is. Now, I'm going to keep this up because I really believe this is where we want to go. And as you come up here, I want you to come up here. And I'll be very honest. I don't think there's a person in this room, unless you don't want to come up here, that shouldn't be up here, and we should pray for each other. Okay? I think we really, because that's what it's about. Tag, you're it. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Um, you are so good. You are an awesome God. Lord, help us not to think it's about us. Help us, Lord, to embrace the thorn in the flesh, if that's what it is. Lord, we could plead with you, but it, we want to leave it up to you how you want to handle it. Help us to be humble, humble us, humble us, humble us, humble us, so we realize that who am I that you would use me, but then end with here I am, because the amazing thing about this is us, our little, our little peons with little brains, except for me, <laughs> us with the little brains, that you want to use us, Lord. And may we always end and work towards here I am, Lord, use me your faithful servant. Help us. In Yeshua's name, amen. You want to play, uh, what was the last? I wrote it down. Can we play that again? Create At least the chorus? Yeah. Create a new one. Um, if you feel that, please come up here. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray that God will turn us from that narcissist to the who am I, to eventually that Hanini, because whoever you are, God wants to use you, and you, and you, and you. Amen.
be back in a second. Two things. Well, first of all, pr pray, pray for me because I might have to have surgery in the next weeks for my uh, spinal stenosis. And I won't get into all the issues. You can talk to me later about it if you want. But the most important thing, much more important to my surgery, is we're doing an outreach. I know the weather doesn't look good, but pray that it does look good. We're doing an outreach. It's going to be 11 to 12. And if anybody knows where Yeshua Ben David is, it's in Squirrel Hill. Uh, the information is on here. I think it gives you the address, does it? If not, I'll get it to you. But we have an outreach. It's supposed to be Monday to Wednesday. I might do it Monday to Friday because I don't know how the weather's going to be. Plus, I, I like doing it. And we're going to try to do it from 12 until, you know, it gets slow. And, or when you have to leave. you got to leave, you got to leave. If you can't be there in the morning, come in the afternoon or the night. But please come. Support us. Obviously, we love support in any which way. Prayer finances, but there's nothing more important to us than volunteers who want to come down there, even if it's just to pray, even if it's just to hand out tracks. I'm not a broadsider, but there are people who like broadsiding. Hand out waters, hand out chips. Please, please come because Hanini, here I am, send me. This is an opportunity to tell the Lord with your hand raised, here I am, send me like Isaiah did. I know that's your guy. So, Please do that. And I just want to release anybody. If you're not going to, I mean, you could stay here, whether you come up or not. But if there's people who want to go downstairs and fellowship and cooking or whatever they have to do, that's fine. I'm releasing you to do that. But please, if you want to come up and pray, pray. If you want to sit in the sidelines and pray, great. I might even come up to you and, and call you out after I'm done up here. <laughs> You know, some of you don't mind, right? We're just gonna end it. We're just gonna end it. And I guess we do the Shabbat song that way when it's over. We'll, I could even. Now, Rob's a good. Pray. Rob will pray for the crew downstairs eventually, because he's the man when it comes to that. And it's his birthday. Let him do it. Could be great. Okay. Oh man. You know something is bad. I am so bad that I I need the crutch to have it in front of me because if I don't have the crutch, I might miss a word and feel like. Uh, like the small brain guy that I am. <laughs> oh, I'm having fun with that. Today. I, hope you, I hope you are. <laughs> oh, too much, too much. <coughs> Here we go. Yes, yes, I don't trust myself. Okay, let's do this. Yivareka Adonai v'yishmareka Ya Adonai panavalecha v'kuneheka Yisa Adonai panavalecha v'yisem lecha Shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, give you his true shalom. And as we said, in eternity, we're going to have that Hanini all the time, and we're going to have peace, rest, and true shalom. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. God bless you. I better see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>